Amen. It is so good to be back at Norwich Assembly of God. It's been, it's been a while since I've been here last. Uh, I just want to say please excuse my voice. Uh, I was, it's that season where it gets hot and cold and allergens and everything, but how many know God's going to bring us through it? Amen. Amen. So it has been a while. It's good to see my friends, the sisters. I love you both. <laughs> Amen. God has done great things over the past few years and brought us through so much. Amen. Amen. He really has. Uh, I bring you greetings from my senior pastor, uh, Pastor Greg Wheaton, and the people of Liberty Christian Center. Uh, pastor Randy's brother, Greg, attends our church. And he's one of our deacons, and he's an awesome man, and uh, they're, they're a great family. And I really appreciate Pastor Randy, uh, who is an awesome man of God, so worthy of honor, who has been faithful to the work here in Norwich for 20 years. Amen. You know, a lot of pastors are always looking to move up and, and get the bigger church and, and, you know, increase. But Pastor Randy's an awesome man of God who is faithful. And I appreciate him and all that he does here in Norwich. Uh, I bring you greetings from my wife. Uh, please keep her in your prayer. She's not feeling well this morning. So uh, after the service, I'm going to have to beat feet back and... Uh, take care of the kids. Amen. <laughs> Daddy duty. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, I am a graduate of Zion Bible College, uh, same school that Pastor Randy went to. Um, and I've been in the ministry now for, oh my goodness, uh, 34 years. You say, well, you look awfully young. Yes, I started preaching at 15 years old. I was just dumb enough to believe that God could use a kid. And I've seen God do many great things in 34 years. And I'm looking forward to um, 34 more of doing his work. Amen. Amen. I just celebrated. So those of you that want to do the math, I just celebrated my 50th birthday uh, last month. Amen. Amen. And praise God. You know, and I almost was not here. Um, those of you that might remember, in August of 2021, I was supposed to come and preach and could not come because I got COVID. And so I'm so grateful to be back here with you. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit more in the message. But uh, I just want to invite you to stand with me and turn to the book of First Samuel, chapter 30. We're just going to stand for the word. I'm a little bit old-fashioned that way. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 30. And when you found it, say amen. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive there within. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam the Jezreelite, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Going down to verse 17. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the 
even unto the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, you will recover all. Father, I just thank you right now that we could be in this house. Father, I pray that you will have your way in these next few moments. Father, anoint my mind and my heart and ears to be attentive to the leading of your spirit. Anoint my mouth to speak forth your word with power, authority, and clarity. I pray that you will touch the hearts, minds, and ears of those who are listening, that they might receive your word and that faith might be built into their hearts. Father, I pray that I will decrease, but Christ will increase. Father, I pray that you will just be glorified in all that we say or do, that the church will be edified, and that the devil will be horrified. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. One of the biggest things that we deal with in life is loss. Let's just be honest. We deal with loss all the time. You know, my beloved wife often loses her keys. Amen. <laughs> Honey, have you seen my keys? I can't find them. And they'll be somewhere obscure, like up in the kitchen cupboard or something. And, you know, when you look at your paycheck and see what the government took, you know all about loss. Amen. Amen. We deal with, we, we lose relationships, we lose money, we lose time, we lose energy, we lose strength. We deal constantly with the concept of loss. Amen. Sometimes that loss comes in the form of an attack of the enemy. How many know the devil is busy? Jesus said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. The enemy is always trying to steal from you. He tries to steal your peace. He tries to steal your joy. He tries to steal your, your, your salvation. He tries to steal your health. He is busy trying to steal from you. Attack after attack after attack to try and steal what God is doing in your life. That was much the condition that David found at Ziklag. David had been off with the Philistines, preparing to fight a war with them. When they told him they did not need his help, they did not trust him, he returned to Ziklag only to find loss. The Bible says after a three-day march with his troops, he came to Ziklag to find Ziklag burned and every man, every woman, every child, every possession or cattle or sheep, everything was gone. He lost everything. The Bible says it was so bad that even the men that were with him, he went as far as losing their support because they were talking about stoning him. I want you to understand this. These guys had stuck by David through thick and thin. When Saul chased him, they were by his side. 
<clears throat> when he had no food to provide for them, they stood by his side. In every battle, they stood by, their, by his side. But here now in Ziklag, with everything gone, these men were now talking about turning on David. So David had lost his city, he lost his family, he lost all his possessions, he lost everything his men owned, and he lost the support of his men. David was in a lonely, lonely place. Have you ever had the devil attack you so bad that it feels like you're losing everything? Oh, I had that happen to me. You see, uh, I, I'm a bivocational pastor. I work part-time for the church. I work full-time for the federal government right here in Norwich. I'm down here every day, Monday through Friday, downtown on Cliff Street. I work for the VA. So when COVID was happening in 2021, it was mandated we had to get a shot. Me being the person that I am, I said, I'm waiting six months. I want to make sure nobody's eye falls out or nothing, you know, I just, I want to make, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know, I don't know about this stuff. So I waited six months. Nobody's arm was falling off, nobody's eyes were popping out. I said, okay, I'm going to get it now. Now they tell you don't get the shot if you have COVID in your system and there's a reason for that because it's very dangerous for your body to fight the vaccine and the sickness at the same time. It's an important part of that story. After work, I went to the FEMA center near my house, rolled up my sleeves, they gave me the Johnson Johnson, one and done. I'm not taking a second one. I got it, went home, walked in the door, saw my youngest there, I said, hey Austin, how you doing? Daddy loves you, hugged him, kissed him. Little did I know he had been exposed that day to COVID. So when I hugged him and kissed him, guess what he did? He shared, you know, you know. I'm like, why is it always they share the germs? They don't ever share their toys. <laughs> they don't want to share food. They won't share money, but they'll share their germs. It's... Hugged him, kissed him, boom, COVID. So I have the vaccine and COVID in my system. Started not feeling good, getting a headache. Uh, August 5th, I said, hey, let's all, go, let's all go get tested. They tested us, it wasn't even five minutes. Oh yeah, all five of you got COVID. Called up Pastor Randy, hey Pastor Randy, I can't come this Sunday, I got COVID. That was a Thursday night. Friday, I was kind of, uh, Saturday, bed all day. Sunday, bed all day. Monday, struggling to breathe. Got a fan blowing on me. The morning of August 11th, I woke up and looked at my wife and said, I'm not going to make it. Call an ambulance. I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to sit on the porch. I'm going to have them come get me. Got dressed, went down the stairs. She put a chair on the porch for me. I sat down on the, on the porch. I kissed her goodbye. And when the ambulance pulled up, I didn't know if I was ever gonna see my wife again. And the devil was like, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna take you out. I said, I don't know if I'll see my kids this side of glory. I don't know if I'll see my wife again this side of glory. I don't know if I'm gonna see my brothers or sisters again this side of glory. I went to the hospital not knowing what was gonna happen because I felt that terrible. Got to the emergency room, told the doctor what was going on. They tried to put a, what was called a BPAP machine on me to help me breathe didn't work. I was like, I can't breathe with this. No. And then they said the dreaded words that nobody wants to hear. If you can't take this, we're going to put you on a ventilator. 
you know 79% of people that went on the ventilator did not come off. I called my wife. I said, baby, they're talking ventilator. I said, I love you. I love the kids. She said to me, don't worry. You just do what you need to do. Don't worry about us. We're going to be all right. I said, baby, I love you. That's the last thing I remember. The devil tried to take me out. He wants to take everything from you. Your peace, your joy, your, your happiness. Your, you know, your, he wants to destroy your finances. He wants to destroy your love. He wants to destroy your joy. He wants to take everything that you have. I remember quoting the psalmist as they were wheeling me up to the ICU. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I was ready to go if he's going to take me, but I was like, I shall not die but live. That will be done. David lost everything. I felt like I was losing everything. My health was shot. I didn't know if I was going to see my family again. I kind of know how David felt. Alone. In loss. Not sure what the future was going to hold. But God's promise is true. He's come to give you life and life more abundantly. <clears throat> you will recover all. That's my message to you this morning. You will recover all. Well, Pastor Derek, how do we recover all? I'm so glad you asked me. Let me tell you how. Number one, you just got to praise. You just got to praise God. So let me tell you, nine days later, I opened up my eyes. And the nurse looked me in the face and said, welcome back, you're a miracle. I said, what's going on? She said, you, you've been on a ventilator for nine days. We just took you off. You're breathing on your own. You're good to go. While I was under, my blood pressure went to 197 over, over 142. I mean, it was, I got a staph infection while I was under. My kidneys almost failed while I was under. But there were saints praying for me all over the globe. And here I am. But even when I woke up, they had me on all kinds of medications. My mind felt like it was shattered. I could hardly think straight. I, I was so weak, I was so sick. And the enemy kept on saying, I'm still going to take you out. You're still not going to make it out of this hospital. You're still not going to do it. You're, you're going to be gone. I got you. You're mine. I just kept on saying, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. The anxiety was so strong. But you know what got me over? I started praising God. See, my sister, when people could come visit me, brought me some headphones. And she said, Derek, why don't you just listen to some worship music when you feel anxious? And I did not put on, you know, you know, you are Jaira. I didn't put it on. I, I love Jaira, but I didn't put on Jaira. I put on shout music. You know shout music. I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Whoa, I couldn't even walk yet, but I'm dancing in my bed. <laughs> so you got to praise God. You got to praise God in the midst of everything going wrong. You need to praise God. <clears throat> the Bible says, listen to these words. Chapman, verse 6. 
and David was greatly distressed. Beloved, you will be distressed, yes. You will feel the anxiety. You will feel the heartache. You will feel the confusion. But in the midst of that, it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. Oh, come on. David encouraged himself. See, David went back and thought about all the things that God had done for him. Come on. Oh, I've lost my wife, but God had Samuel anoint me and tell me I'm going to become king. I'm called. And, and yes, I've lost my children, but you know what? Uh, <coughs> God helped me overcome Goliath, and he can help me overcome this. Thank you, God, for giving me victory against Goliath. And there's that time that God helped me with, what, with a thousand Philistines where I was able to conquer them and, and get a wife as a result of it. And there's that time that God blessed me and kept me from Saul and God and God and God. See, beloved, when everything is going wrong, you need to remember what God did and begin to praise him for what he did in your life. I said, devil, everything that God brought me through, you think I belong to you? Oh, no, 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 no. I belong to the Most High. I am his child. He, he gave me food when I was hungry. He provided for all my needs. There is no way that you are going to conquer me with God on my side. And I praised him. Praise him. Glorify him. Worship him. Even when it hurts, even when there's pain, you need to learn to praise God in the midst of all of it. I remember when I was in Bible school, I had a professor who did not like me. I don't know what I ever did to him. I don't. I try and be nice to everybody. I don't, you know, I don't know why he didn't like me. There's something about me he just did not like. And I would go to a chapel service and God would move beautifully and it'd be wonderful and I'd be coming out, you know, and I'd have my tie undone like this and walk into the, walk into the lunch hall, you know, and he'd see me just, just want to pick on something. Why is your tie loose? Your tie's supposed to be... Just, just vex my spirit for just on purpose. And I, I, I would run to my dorm room throw on some fast, good praise music, grab my tambourine and say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And I would just praise on through. You see, they taught us a song in children's church. I just simply said this, hallelujah, anyhow. Never let the devil get you down. When trouble comes your way, lift your hands up high and say, hallelujah, anyhow. That means when you get a report and the doctor tells you it's cancer, hallelujah, anyhow. When they're saying they're going to foreclose on your home, hallelujah, anyhow. When they tell you they're going to cut off your lights, hallelujah, anyhow. When your children get arrested for the fifth time, hallelujah, anyhow. Praise him. Praise him. Because praise is the beginning of the victory. Pastor Derek, how do you know that? I'm glad you asked. Because when Jehoshaphat had to go out to battle, they put the musicians and the worshipers in the front. Come on, somebody. And as they came out singing the songs of Zion, God was fighting their battle. Come on, somebody. At Jericho, they shouted a shout of praise unto the Lord Most High, and the walls came down. Praise is the beginning of victory. And if you need victory, if you need to recover it, you need to stop praising God for it. Come on. Praise. There's nothing like a good hallelujah. Nothing like a good yes, Jesus. 
hold yourself and just rock and moan. Come on. Sometimes you just, mm -hmm, yes, Lord. That's what my grandmother used to do. Praise. David encouraged himself. You see, because when you start, when you start remembering all that God had done for you and you start praising him for it, you get your mind off of the things that you think are impossible. Come on. He encouraged himself. Secondly, pray. Pray. You know, I dare sister just announce prayer tonight. I hope there's more than seven that come tonight. Amen. I'm with you. David said to Abiathar, the priest, the Himelech's son, I pray thee, bring hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord. In other words, David prayed. Beloved, you got to pray. You ever notice when things happen bad in our lives, we run around telling everybody else except the Lord. Come on. We call up church members. We call up family. Well, you won't believe what's happening to me. You won't believe what I'm going through. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh pray for me. And pray. But the whole time you're not praying for yourself. Come on. Amen. Ouch. Run around telling everybody about everything. The old hymn says, I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. I cannot bear these burdens alone. Come on, somebody. We need to pray. <coughs> Prayer changes things. Jesus told the story about the unjust judge, the woman coming to the judge day after day after day saying, give me justice. Finally, the unjust judge said, and I have no respect for this woman and I don't fear men, but because she wearies me, I'm going to give her what she wants. Jesus told that as an example of us that we should always pray and faint not. David inquired of the Lord. Lord, I have this problem. I need you to do something about it. Help me, Lord. What's the answer? Prayer changes things. I know that from personal experience because I want you to understand one thing about that situation when I had COVID. I was the only one in ICU that week that came off a ventilator alive because there were people in Australia praying for me and people in Korea were praying for me and people in India were praying for me and people in Africa were praying for me people in South America and North America were praying for me all over the globe 24 hours a day the whole time I was on the ventilator there were people calling my name out before the Lord and prayer changed it Prayer works. All you got to do is pray. Get down on your knees and begin to talk to the Lord. Because God hears all and he sees all. Well, Pastor Derek, don't God already know what I need? Should he just do it? The Bible says you have not because you ask not. I tell my wife that all the time. She said, didn't you see them dishes in the sink? <laughs> Honey, you have not because you ask not. If you ask me, I'll do them. But I don't know what your plans are. I don't know if you had them there for a reason. I don't know what's what, you know. You want me to do them, ask. You have not because you asked. Now, if you ask me, I'll do them. 
And she says, well, you do them? Okay, fine, I do them. <laughs> but beloved, we have not. Yes, God knows. Yes, God sees. But the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Well, Pastor Derek, how, how many times should we pray? How long should we pray? I'll tell you, the answer is this, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. <clears throat> pray until you get an answer. You know, those folks prayed me through. I came off that ventilator and, and they, they had put up a whole Facebook group message thing praying. All my Bible college friends are all praying for me. And when I was awake, as soon as I was able to, I jumped on there and said, thank you for your prayers. Keep, pray, keep praying until I'm 100%. Like I said, my mind was cloudy. My, I, could, I couldn't walk. I was so weak and, you know, But as I began to praise God and as I began to pray, I gained strength. I got stronger. Hallelujah. My mind cleared up. Pray. Prayer makes the difference. My grandmother, she just passed away last year at 100 years old wonderful saint of God learned so much at her knee all her kids at one point had walked away from the Lord but every day she called their names before God every day called their names out before God every day Bobby, Carol Diane Beverly well, I mean, she did it to the day she, she did it. I mean, continually. First, my mom came back, got back in the church. Shortly after that, my Aunt Diane came back to the church. Not only did she come back to the church, she married the assistant pastor. The younger two held out. Oh, they held out. But don't you know about mm, seven, eight years ago, all of a sudden my Uncle Bobby came back into the church, started singing in the choir, letting God use him once again. And then shortly after that, here came my Aunt Beverly. My grandmother was in her 90s, but all her kids were finally back in the house of God because she never stopped praying. Amen. Pray, beloved, pray. It works. Not only that, but God will give you guidance about what you're to do. See, if we try, if we try to solve it on our own, come on, somebody. We're going to mess up. We're going to mess up. Pray that God give you the answer. See, we do it the opposite way. We come up with the answer and then we say, oh, God, bless this. Bless it, Jesus. No, no. Pray. Let him give you the answer. It will save you so much heartache and frustration. David prayed. Lord, what do I do? Do I pursue them or no? Give me an answer. And then look at what God said. Pursue. Thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. See, David prayed until he got an answer. And the answer was pursue. Go after them. You're going to get it all back. Go. 
beloved once you have your answer you've praised you prayed you got your answer then you got to pursue oh come on you got to pursue in other words you got to do what the Lord says do oh you know how we get as Christians okay Lord I prayed now I'm just going to sit here and wait for you to drop it on me come on I know nobody here in Norwich those, those, those folks are back at Taunton I know that you see once David got the answer it required action can we get rid of of lazy Christianity oh come on somebody Amen. God is a God of action he told David pursue pursue David pursued with vengeance come on somebody <clears throat> David was ready to fight David was rolling up his sleeve. He wasn't going out to the uh, hi, hi hey Mr. Malachi can, 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 can I get my kids back Oh no, the Bible says David fell on them. Did you get your deliverance yet? No, no, but I, I asked the Lord, you know, and he, he gonna give it to me, you know, when he, when he ready to, you know, he'll, he'll do it. No, no, pursue. You gotta be ready to fight. Sometimes there's a struggle involved, come on. I, I mean, I'll tell you what, I, in that hospital room, was battling the devil every single day. You will not get the victory. You will not kill me. In fact, as a devil, I'm putting you on notice. When I get out of this hospital room, I'm gonna do even more damage to your kingdom than I've done before because you try to take me out. Now I'm going after yours. Come on. Fight. See, we got. I, I, I love the saints, but sometimes, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a preacher's kid, so can I just be real? Sometimes y'all too nice. You ain't supposed to get along with the devil. Beat him up. I have five, I, I, I have you know, four brothers. We fought. You know, we, we could, no one else could beat up our brother, but we could beat up each other, you know? You gotta get a fight inside of you. Listen to me, you gotta get a fight inside of you. You gotta fight the devil. The Bible says the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You need to rebuke the devil. You need to cast him out. You need to put him on notice, plead the blood, quote scripture at him, but fight. I told the devil every day in the hospital room, I shall not die but live. I shall not die but live. I shall not die but live and declare the rest of the Lord. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, devil. I told him, I, I said, I've got the victory through Christ Jesus, amen. I was quoting scripture. I was in a fight. And beloved, sometimes you just gotta fight. Matthew eleven twelve, 12 the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force you see Matthew used very specific words there see the word take it by force is the Greek word hapazo which means to snatch up pluck, pull up. That's from where we get the word rapture from. And the word violence is biastes. And let me give you an example. I used to be music pastor at a church called Maranatha Tabernacle Church of God. And there was a church mother, Mother Joni. And she had a few of her great nieces and nephews as foster kids. And they lived in South Providence. South Providence is the rough part of Providence. 
and, and they lived in South Providence. So these kids, you know, they they were in the house of God, but you know, they was they was just in. You know what I mean? They was ju- no, they just in, but not quite in in. And one day, Mother Joni was supposed to lead prayer, and she was at the pulpit, and she looked up and said, "Lord Jesus." And everybody looked because we knew one of the kids was acting up in church. And sure enough, this one little girl named Andrea was acting up and not not paying attention. Mother Joni said, excuse me, and came off the pulpit. Walked down the aisle and she hapazoed Andrea out the seat. And then, Beasties. Beloved, you got to get violent against the kingdom of darkness. Come on. You got to get violent against the devil. Pull out the sword of the spirit and stop beating him down with some scripture. Stop beating him down with some worship. You know, put him under your feet and stop, stop, stop away. Tell them, devil, you can't have my children, you can't have my home, you can't have my peace, you can't have my joy. I am fighting you with every little bit inside of me. Pursue. (coughs) Pursue. Go after it. Because he's not going to just let it go. You got to fight. And if you fight, you will win. Because God said, you shall recover all. Every promise he ever made to you, every gifting, every calling, everything that he spoke into your life that you were afraid to tell people unless they thought you was crazy, all those dreams that you thought you lost all those years ago, you shall recover them all. Pursue. Go after it. David recovered all. Nothing nothing not one child was lost not one sheep not one hair on anybody's head was gone every man every woman every child all the cattle not only that but beloved read what the Bible says he got even more than what they took oh come on somebody oh he got all Let me tell you this part of my story. I had just gotten that government job down here in Norwich only a few months before I got sick. I thought to myself, ugh, dick over the job. You know, I was under, I couldn't find no paperwork. I couldn't do nothing, so there's no FMLA. And uh, I, I done lost my job. They told me, while you were under, so-and-so and so-and-so went to bat for you. They contacted HR. HR told them, oh, well, we, he's, not a, he's not awake. He can't sign the FMLA paperwork. They said, just do it. Just do it. He's on a ventilator. Just do it. They said, do you promise he'll sign it when he wakes up? They said, yes, just do it. They said, look, if you don't sign the paperwork, it's your job. They said, just do it. So they instituted FMLA to protect my job. Not only that, but they also enacted this other thing that they had at that time called emergency paid leave. See, Pastor Derek didn't have the sick time built up yet. But how many know God knew my family needed to eat? So they enacted emergency paid leave. So my pay still continued even though I wasn't at work. Amen. Amen. Take that devil. Take that devil. And when I woke up, guess what? I signed that paperwork so fast. So I'm not, I'm not going to mess this up. No way. No way. 
God started giving me favor on the job. Favor upon favor. After nine months of being on the job, and I had been out for two months due to COVID, they came to me and said, you know, you're doing so good. We put a new, we put a new office manager down in New Haven. We want you to train them. I said, I, I, I'm, I missed two months now. I'm only been nine months on the job and missed two months. You want, oh yeah, you go ahead. Train that person, next thing you know. We want you to serve on interview panels. We want you to do this. Can you help us with this? Can you train that one? I'm about to go for a promotion. Interview tomorrow. The, the devil tried to take it all away, but God told me to pursue. Come on, somebody. You might have lost some things, but God's word to you this morning is this. You shall recover all. If you just keep on praising, keep on praying, keep on pursuing, watch what God will do. Amen. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. You shall recover all. You're here this morning and you say, Pastor Derek, I've gone through some pain, some trials, some struggles. I've been through some battles. I've got scars from the battle. Hallelujah. I also want to tell you this. I have no long-term COVID side effects. I was released from the hospital a month early to the rehab hospital. They expected me to be at the rehab hospital four weeks. I was there eight days and got out because of God. Recovered it all. You're saying I've been through battles, I've been through trials, I got, I got scars, I got, I've lost. Had loss after loss after loss. But I want to believe God for his promise. I want to believe God to recover it all. I'm going to recover my children. I'm going to recover my health. I'm going to recover my calling. I'm going to recover my blessings. I'm going to recover what the devil has stolen from me. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to praise, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pursue. If that's you this morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, just raise your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, right now, you see every single hand that went up. <clears throat> Father, they're believing your word this morning that they will recover all. Father, first of all, I pray that you will put a song of praise on their lips. That even in the darkest times, even in the fiercest battle, even the times when it feels like they're so overwhelmed that they're going to lose their mind, that, Father, that you will put that song of praise in their heart and on their lips and that they will begin to glorify you and delight themselves in you and remember all that you did for them and brought them through in the past. That they will encourage themselves in you, worshiping and praising you for all that you have done, Father. Father, I pray that you stir a heart of prayer in them, Father. 
and they would go to their knees at their couch side, at their bedside, at the altar, and just begin to seek your face, call upon your name, because those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That they'll seek you and cry out to you, that they'll hunger after you and thirst after you and reach out towards you, Father. Because as they draw closer to you, you will begin to unfold in their life the answer and the plan that they need to overcome. Father, I pray that when you give them the word, that they will pursue, that they will go, that they will fight, that they will call up, that they will quote scripture, that they will grab a hold of your word and come against the enemy in the name of Jesus, that they will rebuke him, fight the battle because the weapons of the warfare are not carnal. I pray that they'll put on the full armor of God and stand upon your word and do battle until the victory is won. And Father, you will give them the victory because your word says that they are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Father, I pray that they will recover all and come back with a testimony of all that you have done. I pray this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you.